Each of these stones individually are not impressive, right? But as soon as we put them all together in this structure, they look pretty cool. This, that's the same for cell respiration. You're going to learn a lot of individual processes, kind of like representing these stones. But when they all come together, it'll all make sense, okay? And you'll understand everything. So the least I can do is try and make this process as convenient and simple as possible. So let's just get started. So let's start off with this guy here because I want to explain some key concepts that'll make all of this much easier. So here we have Iron Mike Tyson, okay? He is a boxer. Maybe you don't know him. It doesn't matter. But he is trying to go buy some boxing gloves, okay? He's just getting old, okay? So what he does is he goes to a store, okay? Um, and he's going to go buy them. Now, he brings dollars to the store, okay? Because he's American and he's got dollars. Now, the problem is, it turns out the store he's in is in a European country. And so he can't buy it with dollars. Even though he has enough money, it doesn't mean anything. This product cannot be bought with dollars. So what happens is he needs to exchange this money, right? He needs to go to the exchange machine and transfer it into euros, okay? Now he can afford it. So now it works. This works, right? When it was, when it was dollars, it didn't. It didn't work. The currency was wrong. Now, that's the same thing here with something important in cell respiration. So even though he had the right currency... It didn't work, okay? The right currency matters. So why am I talking about this? It's the same in our bodies, okay? We know, let's look at here at Zac Efron. He's made up of billions of cells just like us, right? The smallest living thing. And we know that basically if we eat food, right? Say, say, say we eat a burger, okay? We go eat a burger. This burger is not going to give our cell energy, right? This is way too big. Our cell cannot, it's, it's, million times bigger than our cell. Our cell can't use it as energy, right? So it cannot use it. So this is the wrong currency in a sense, right? This like dollar was the wrong currency. So we need to convert this into a currency that our cells can use, okay? Because our cells need um, money to be able to do things, right? In a sense, they need a form of currency so that every all the processes can happen properly. So why is this one wrong? So let's break it down then into a smaller thing, okay? We digest it puts it in his mouth, digestive system breaks it down into something smaller. So for example, glucose, this here is glucose. Um, you'll learn about this or maybe you've learned about glucose already in another chapter. Now, does glucose work? Can the cell use glucose as energy? No, right? Glucose is still too big. Glucose cannot pay all of these things to do their job, okay? So we need one last step. This last step is called cell respiration and that's the process of turning glucose into ATP. ATP is the right currency, okay? This is the right currency. Our cells recognize ATP. This is the money that our cells use. ATP regulates everything our cells. It provides the energy to make all the reactions happen and everything to stay alive, okay? So that's why I was talking about this dollars and euros thing. Just like Mike Tyson, um, Mike Tyson needed the right currency to buy his gloves, our cells need the right currency to be able to pay all the organelles to do their job or provide all the energy to do their job, okay? So we need to convert our burger or our food into ATP. Now, we're specifically learning about cell respiration. This is the process of converting this glucose into ATP, right? Because glucose into ATP, that's cell respiration, okay? Breaking glucose down for energy. So let's go down here. So here we have him again, Mike Tyson in the boxing ring, boxing this guy, right? So I want to make things a little bit more clear on where the heck this happens, where this, this process happened of turning glucose into ATP, where the cell respiration happens. So we open this, we're going to open this chamber of secrets, okay? And this is where we're going to start off. So we're going to zoom in to him, just like we did with Zac Efron, and we're going to look at his cells, okay? Because he's made up of cells, right? So here we got his cell. Okay, right. Now, we know our cells are made up of a lot of organelles, and the organelle responsible for doing this process or making ATP is the mitochondria, okay? This is the powerhouse of the cell. So let's label it right here. 
label. It's a bit small here, so let's make it a bit bigger to see what's really going on here. So here we zoom in to our mitochondria. Here's our mitochondria. Okay. Now, we can't see the inside of the mitochondria yet, so we're going to slice it open. We're going to move the top to be able to see the inside. Now, look, it's a pretty complicated structure, and I made a video on labeling all of these, but anyways, we're just going to get started, and I'll add some details on what you need to know. So this organelle is where cell respiration happens, where ATP is made. Now, bear in mind, cell respiration doesn't only depend on the mitochondria. The first part happens inside the cytoplasm. The second, third, the second and third part happens inside the mitochondria, okay? So today, since we're starting off with explaining cell respiration, we're, we're going to talk about the first part, which happens here in the cytoplasm, okay? The cytoplasm. This is where glycolysis happened, the first part. And then after that, we move into the mitochondria where the second and third part happens, okay? And that will be a separate video. So now that we know where we're going to focus for the first part, where cell respiration begins, we can get started. Okay, so here we have, where are we? We Notice the um, light blue background, okay? This is the cytoplasm, okay? We're basically zoomed in to right here. We have some cytoplasm and we have the mitochondria. Okay, some cytoplasm, we have the mitochondria, and we have our glucose, okay, our glucose. Let's open up the mitochondria here. So where did our glucose come from, right? When we're hungry, we eat, right? We eat our burgers, our food, and digestion will break it down into the smallest units that it's made of, which is um, one of which is, is, is glucose. Now, there's also amino acids and lipids and stuff, but we're only going to talk about glucose here. So glucose is then going to be broken down further by cell respiration to make ATP, okay? So glucose now arrived inside our cytoplasm, okay? We broke it down by digestion, and now it was sent into the cells, okay? Now our cells can use it to make energy so that we can feel um, satisfied and have energy, right? So we don't, don't want to eat anymore. So I stated before, the first part happens here inside the cytoplasm. That's glycolysis. The second part, called the, uh, the link reaction, is going to happen here, along with the Krebs cycle in the matrix. This is called the matrix. The third part, the third part, will which is called the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis, will happen on this membrane here, called the inner membrane. This membrane here is the outer membrane, okay? So, we're only going to focus here, okay, the um, for this video on the cytoplasm. So, let's get started. So here we have a glucose, remember? Now, I'm going to make a simplified version of this diagram just for the diagram's sake, okay? So I don't have to keep using this, okay? Now, let's talk about glycolysis. So glycolysis is this. It is glyco means glucose and lysis means splitting. So what are we doing? Glycolysis is the process of splitting glucose, glucose splitting, okay? We're going to split glucose apart. That's all that glycolysis is because... Like I said, it's too big. We need to break it down into something smaller um, that our body can use as energy. So that's the first part, glycolysis. Now let's fill in this diagram and build it, okay? Now remember how I said that I'm going to simplify glucose. Now here's my simplified diagram, okay? We know glucose in reality looks like this. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, a bunch of hydrogens and oxygens. Now I'm simplifying it into just a chain of six carbons, okay? Because glucose is made of six carbons. We don't care right now about the oxygen and the hydrogens. We just care about the carbon for now, okay? The, the main structures. Here we have six carbons. This is going to be our glucose, okay? This is a um, simplified diagram for the explanation's sake. Now, what happens first? So we have our glucose. The first step is called photophosphorylation. I mean phosphorylation, not photophosphorylation. Phosphorylation. And what happens in this process is basically this. ATP, that's interesting, right? We're using ATP. That's strange. I thought the purpose was to make ATP. So now you're telling me the first part, photophosphorylation, we're using ATP? How does that make sense? Don't worry. Right now you may be like, whoa, we're using ATP, but we want to make? Don't worry, it's going to make sense. It's going to make sense real soon. So the first part, in fact, yes, we do use ATP. Um, what exactly is ATP? So let me show you here. 
ATP is this, okay? It's a little molecule that looks like this, okay? And essentially, what it stands for is adenosine triphosphate. This right here is our adenosine, adenosine, and tri means three, and phosphate is just basically a little um, phosphate group, an element. So we have adenosine here, and then tri, three phosphates, one, two, and three. These are the three phosphates, okay? Now, ATP can tell other molecules or um, can transfer one of these phosphates to other molecules, okay? So, for example, this ATP can transfer this phosphate to this glucose, let's say here, to, this, to one of the carbons, and in the process, it now becomes ADP, adenosine diphosphate, because di means two phosphates, okay? So, that's important. So right here, what's happening is this: these two ATPs are transferring each a phosphate, okay? And this is what is formed. Okay, so now we have a molecule here called hexose biphosphate. And I'll explain exactly what that means. Okay, we have hexo biphosphate. And what's the difference? So I'm going to have a key here, by the way. So all the blue ones are carbon, uh, the main carbon structure of glucose, and then the, these red ones are the phosphates. So this ATP, like I said, breaks off one of these phosphate, which I have as the red molecule here. The, the red molecule here is transferred here. Now, we have two ATPs that do that. That's why our molecule here um, now has one phosphate added to this carbon here and another one added to this carbon here. Okay, so in the process, there's these ATPs, again, turned into ADP, adenosine diphosphate. Um, and we call it phosphor phosphorylation because a phosphate group is added. It's a phosphorylation, okay? Now, the molecule formed is called hexose biphosphate. Hex means six, okay? Ose means sugar. Glucose is also a sugar that has six carbons, right? Anytime you see ose, it means a sugar. So hexose, so it's still a six sugar compound, but it has two phosphate. It has bi means two, right? Like bicycle. Two wheels, bicycle. So hexose, hex means six carbon, and biphosphate, two phosphates. Okay, so that's what we did in the first step of glycolysis. Now next, so far we haven't split the molecule apart yet. We haven't done that yet, right? So lysis hasn't happened yet. Now remember I said we invested two ATPs, and we didn't actually make any ATP yet. So the purpose of adding these phosphates is because this kind of activates this molecule, it activates the glucose by forming this molecule. This molecule can very easily split apart, whereas glucose cannot. So the purpose of this, um, this phosphate being added is to activate this molecule, allowing it to be split more easily, okay? So the next stage is lysis. Lysis, again, I already mentioned, means splitting, right? Up here, splitting. So now we're gonna split this molecule exactly into two, okay? Two. It's two identical, it's two identical molecules. Okay, and we give, you can see, um, uh, three, three carbons with one phosphate, three carbons with one phosphate. It's the exact thing split in two. And we call this molecule, tr these two molecules, triose phosphates, triose phosphate, or triose. Again, remember hex was six and ose was sugar, six carbon sugar. Now this one is three carbon sugar, tri meaning three, like tricycle and phosphate because it has one phosphate on it, okay? Now, what happens next? So next is a process called oxidation, okay? And this process happens with both of these molecules. I'm only gonna show it on one of the molecules, but know that exactly the same is gonna happen for this molecule, okay? So what happens is this. There is a phosphate floating around, so this molecule here, okay? A phosphate, I'm just showing it as a piece of ATP because it is technically a piece of ATP. Um, so it's a phosphate, um, inorganic phosphate, because it's not part of ATP. Anytime a phosphate is not directly attached to ATP like these, we call it inorganic phosphate, PI, P inorganic. Now, basically, by this phosphate is going to be added, okay? So we can know, basically, immediately, that the molecule formed will have another phosphate, okay? So let me show you the molecule form will look like this, okay? We added now a phosphate. Same with the other side. Again, the exact same thing. Wait a second. The exact same thing is happening here on the other side. Oh, 
Okay, now, another thing that's happening is there's a molecule called NAD+. Okay, this molecule has a job. Remember how I said before that glucose has also some hydrogens on it, all right? And I didn't show this. I didn't show this in this molecule. Now, this molecule here, NAD+, is going to pick up two hydrogens. It's going to grab two hydrogens off of this molecule here, okay? And you can see this causes it to become this, NADH plus H. So one H was added onto the NAD to form NADH, and the other H is just ripped off and floating around, okay? Now, we care about NADH. NADH is like a ticket, okay? Remember, uh, think about this. Think about going to um, a, let me show you here. Think about going to an arcade. An arcade, when you go there, you can play the games, right? And you can win all these tickets. And these tickets have no meaning, but like, you can't use them for anything directly. They're just a piece of paper. But you can go to the cashier or the, the table where they have prizes and trade these in for prizes, right? So NADH is pretty much that. It's like a little ticket that later on in the later on in cell respiration can be traded in for ATPs, okay? So essentially it's valuable. It will become ATP. It's not yet ATP, but it can be traded in later for some ATP. So bear that in mind. So that's why we're going to basically Put this here, okay? We're going to remember that this is a ticket, okay? It's going to serve as a ticket for us. Now, remember, it happens also here. So we're, we are gaining a ticket here as well, okay? So we're gaining two tickets so far. Now, the next part is this, okay? Now, these phosphates that we had are going to get pulled back up, pulled off, okay? Now, they're going to get pulled off and put onto what? Let me show you. There's going to be an ADP molecule, okay, an ADP, remember two phosphates, and it's going to be floating around, and it's going to see, oh, there's this molecule with two phosphates on it, okay, and it's going to be like, oh, I'm missing a phosphate um, to become ATP, so it's going to go and move around and grab a phosphate off. In the process of grabbing a phosphate off, um, it becomes ATP, okay, so we can see here, um, this will, this will form two ATPs because one ATP molecule will grab one phosphate. Another ATP molecule will grab another phosphate. So in the process, we have two ADP molecules that became two ATP molecules. And again, this happens here as well, okay? So think about this. Um, oh yeah, first, first before that. Um, and in the process, the product is something called pyruvate. It's basically a three carbon molecule with, without any phosphates. Okay, we call it pyruvate, pyruvate. This molecule is going to be extremely important in the next video, okay? Because this, is, this molecule is now going to be used by the mitochondria to do um, the link reaction and the Krebs cycle, okay? So this is going to be used. This is the thing that's going to be used in the future. Um, we call this process here of forming ATP, ATP formation, ATP formation. Okay, now, what did we generate overall? What, what happened overall? We need to bear this in mind, okay, throughout the videos. So overall, glycolysis generated two ATPs net. Net two ATPs. What do I mean by net? Overall, what did we get out of it? Okay, we spent some ATP and we made some ATP. How many ATPs did we make overall um, net? Net, okay? So think about this. We used two, so now we're, uh, we're minus two. We have minus two ATPs. But then we make two here and we make two here. So we made four. So if we had minus 2 here and we add 4, we have a total of 2 ATPs that we made profit, okay? Now, we made 1 NADH here and 1 NADH here, 2 tickets, right? So we made 2 times of that. And then we made 2 pyruvate. So this is what we generated with glycolysis, okay? This is what we generated so far. We didn't make much ATP yet, so... Hopefully, in the next processes of cell respiration, we'll make a lot more because we need a lot more than two to survive. Um, the, the cells need a lot more than two to survive. Um, I just want to think here. Oh, yeah, a good way to remember these phosphorylation, lysis, oxidation, ATP formation is this. P for people, L for love, O for outdoor, A for activity. People love outdoor activities, okay? This way... This is a, um, a nice way of trying to remember these four consecutive steps of glycolysis. 
So I hope this video was helpful and stay tuned for the next video, which is the link reaction and Krebs cycle.